everybody it's Claire here from Sewn by Claire and today is going to be the day that I do my big reveal on my newly organized and refitted sewing room. Now if you've been following me for a while you know that um, probably a couple of months ago now I posted a video that showed the, the I'm going to say the small room, but it isn't a small room, is it? I'm really, really grateful for my sewing space. And so I was just kind of hesitating, really, because it, you're trying to, to think of the words, the correct words. So I sew within a small room, three metres by three metres, roughly, that was an, um, a bedroom in our um, apartment here, here in um, southern Spain, where we live on the Costa del Sol. Um, and I'm very, very fortunate to have it. I know that some people watching this won't ha will have a, a desk in the bedroom or they have to get their sewing machine out and use it on their dining room table and move it away whenever they they um, need to make a, a meal or what have you or have the children around. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not decrying my space at all. I love it. <laughs> so just, just to put that straight, but it had one or two limitations before in that um, if I wanted to do any cutting out, then I needed to go and use the um, island in the kitchen, which again, very fortunate to have that area or use the dining room table. And one of the big things that I want when I reorganise my sewing room, apart from to make it feel, feel less cluttered and a little less overwhelming with everything, was that I wanted somewhere to be able to cut out. And I'm pleased to say that we managed to sort that out. So I'm going to share with you my, um, my new cutting table and working desk, which is where I've got. Um, and also, so if you wanted to um, see how it was before, then pop on over to the other video. It is a long video, but don't forget you can use the settings to speed it up and then you could turn the volume right down and just speed it up and then just have a quick whistle stop tour. Um, but I think it was, I felt it was important to, in that video to include everything that I'd got to show you, you know, so what it can look like when you keep amassing equipment and patterns and fabric. Um, and I just wanted to, and also in order to understand how organised I feel now, then you needed to understand all of the chaos that I was sewing in before. <laughs> so that's where that all came from. So um, from now, it's just a matter of me um, turning the camera around and having a little look around and showing you. Um, my husband has been an absolute star and he has built a lot of the units, but also we can, um, you know, it, it, you, he isn't a carpenter, and I think that he would say he'd got fairly average DIY skills. He has got a design eye, I think, so I'm really, really pleased to have benefited from that. Um, and I think you'll agree with me that we have that with me that I have benefited from that, and he's put his design stamp on here. But together it turned into a really, really nice project to do. So I'll leave some of that for the end for a bit of a roundup. I'll come back to you at the end. But for now, I'll turn the camera around and we'll we'll do a bit of a tour around. And I'll show you how it is um, in my sewing space now that it, um, it's all finished. Well, 99% finished. It's just little touch-up bits that are needed. Okay, back in a minute. So first of all, I'll give you a quick um, manual turn round. So there's the door as it was before. That hasn't changed. And then if I just move to the side here, here's the behind the door storage area, and that hasn't changed massively. But then I've lost the unit that was just by the side of the Calax unit. And I've now got my Calax unit there with some family photographs and some characters on top there. And the Calax unit from IKEA is really, really good storage. Um, the bins that you can see there, those um, boxes, are fabulously good for hiding a whole load of um, stuff, <laughs> equipment, whatever. And then into the corner, I've got a little tall glass barge, which has got my rolls of my patterns in. And then we've got just the first of the units that my husband has um built for me so I'll just do a quick quick browse around first there's the window that's the wall that I look out on it's not a very picturesque um, view as you can see at the top there there's a the sky um, but it actually keeps the light quite good for me for um, being able to film because it's fairly consistent and then across here you've got a taller unit there with storage underneath there, my re um, reels of threaded there, which is outside, out of the way of the sunshine. I've then made myself a stitching wall. These are all the stitches 
apart from this one here, which is a paint by number that I did it during lockdown. Got my mannequin just there. And then my double wardrobe and I've got fabric storage in this side. And then in this side here is all haberdasheries and some drawers. So I'll just pop you now so that I don't make people feel sick. I'll just pop you onto my tripod and I can just talk about things in a bit more detail. So I hope you can see that I've tried to use every square inch that I've got um, of this floor space. As I say, it's three metres by three metres and that, that is including the, the chunk of the room that this um, double wardrobe here takes out of the room. Um, I've used the height with the units that we've got and I've used as much depth but without trying to make it feel like it's claustrophobic because before when I was working I felt like things were kind of piling on top of me and I couldn't sort of, it, it made it very difficult then to um, feel relaxed and, and comfortable and as if I, I knew where I was going. Um, so the Calyx unit is fabulous, I mean if I just take out this one here um, there are absolutely huge in terms of the size of these boxes um, and the amount of stuff that you can get in them. I have too many scraps. I need to get rid of my get my scraps down. Um, but I've actually got sixteen of these boxes, and these boxes when you but when you buy the cans, you can buy all different sizes. This one's a four by four. Um, so I can use it as shelving on the top as I've got here with some of my lunar lapping characters and then some of my, my photos as well. Um, but it's just, it's not too oppressive in the room, but it, and it hides everything around. And then I've just written on here in just, um, in just a washable um, felt tip so that I could take that off what things are so that I can then work with that. Um, and, um, and, and I've got some idea of where everything is, which is great. Behind the door is a great storage area as well and you know I could even put hooks on the door to hang the ironing board up and just make a bit more room there but at the moment I've got enough and I'm trying not to add to it too much because I think for the space I've got I've got enough um, and I'm trying to work through the, the fabrics that I've got and the materials that I've got and the supplies that I've got in order that I can um, make best use of those before I then start start buying more stuff. So I'm just trying to be very very grateful with what I've got and use that before just adding things willy nilly as a as almost like a compulsion. So I don't want to be doing that. Um, the other thing that I was going to say about was it about the calyx? I can't remember. I was thinking about something and it's it's gone out of my head while I was doing that. Um, but yeah, so I've carried on a little come back to it. But the calyx is is really useful for. I know what it was, it was pattern storage. I knew it'd come back to me. Um, so that's useful for that. And, and what I've done as well is with my pattern storage is I've gone through the patterns, because I don't know about you, but I had a whole load of patterns. And some of them I just know now just don't suit my body shape and just won't almost be size inclusive enough because I'm, I'm a curvy girl and, and a mature body. And some of them were designed like the earlier Vogue and what have you. And people had given me some vintage patterns they'd found and things like that. So I've put those to one side and put those kind of out of my general um, pattern area. So it's a bit like having clothes in your wardrobe that you know you can't wear or you can't fit into. It's just much easier in my mind for me, anyway, I can't say for anybody else, but to take those things out of the way and not have them screaming at me um, with all of those things. So what I've, what I've done is I've gone through my patterns, I've kept out the ones that I do want to make, so they're in one of these Calyx boxes like this, but then what I've done is, so like, I'm trying to find all the picture on for you to show you. So here I've had some um, patterns printed out onto AO size and I've put them into these five litre um, freezer bags and then I'm just writing on the top of them what it is, this one for Cashmere at Hampton, because then when I'm just going through them I can look at the titles on the top of the plastic bags and that way then I can get to what I want all the time. So again, it, it, it's just a way of, of um, sorting through things so you've not got everything overwhelming you all at once. Um, and that's that seems to be working quite well. So like there, there's my my one for the cashmere at Upton, um, and I've got you know those patterns then that I can just look through the top of and just pull them pull them out. So I'm happy with that. And I think that I've kind of gone off the um, printing out individual pages of PDF patterns and sellotaping them all together. Where possible, I'm either going to um, buy the paper pattern, tissue pattern, and have it shipped to me. And I, when I'm doing that, I always trace it off anyway, so I'll always have that master pattern. 
or I'm going to find somewhere that um, prints out the AO size and then I'll fold it up. So that's what's happened with these is I've printed off the AO size of the pattern. Um, keep that and I'll open that up and trace it off. And that's that's working for me a lot better, I think, in my head than because I've got some here in this little um, cabinet here where when they're all stuck together with the sellotape, you can't really see it on this one, but this one's all stuck together with sellotape. They just don't fold very nicely. So I can't then take a big sheet of paper and fold it nicely. All the edges get crinkled and everything and it was just... It wasn't stressing me but it was just not sitting comfortably so i've got a few that i've already got that um are pdf ones that i use like this one's the what shirt the pattern that i use for rob the island islander shirt pattern um and so i've got those rolled up and just put in a vase just to the side here let me just move you around slightly sorry for the juddering but there's um behind this little child's mannequin big vase that was just oh, I can't see for the same machine hold on a second there we go there's a big vase that's just here and so i've only got two or three but i'm just popping those into there and i've got some wrapping paper in there that just sort of keeps those and that's just holding those together for me so i can but I, as i say i'll try and avoid adding to that list if i can My little child's mannequin is just just tucked into the side and I, I really like making children's clothes. That's one of my really favourite things to do. I haven't got so many fitting issues. Um, and um, they just look so adorable, don't they? Um, so, yeah. But that's a so pattern storage idea for you, just in case you've um, done that. And that's my adult patterns. And then I've got another one for kids' patterns as well, which is down here. Kids' patterns and toys. Um, and then I think... No, I haven't got any other patterns anywhere. So then I've sorted out those other patterns so that they're out of the way now so that um, I'm not looking at them all the time. I'm saving the best bit, the piece de la resistance, which is my table until later. I'm going to show you that um, later as I can. But as you can see, the light's just um, affecting the, the filming. Um, so let me just turn the camera around and reposition it so I can show you the shelving unit that my husband's built for me. Um, and then we'll just talk about that and how we did that. One second. Okay, it's so one of the fan fantastic things we have over in Spain, which we don't have in all other countries, is we have these metal shutters. So I've just put the metal shutters down now, which has blocked out all of the light, so that I can just show you this part of the room. Um, and this is one of the units that my husband has built. So it starts at this height here, and then goes down to the floor. And what we've done is we've split that, so there's, root, there's supports in it to be able to um, hold up the um, top, so I could use the top for things as well. Um, and I've got my books down the bottom there nicely now that I can see in books and magazines. That I, and I've been through those and I've got rid of some that I knew that I just wouldn't use. Um, so I, there has been a bit of a culling going on as well. Um, and then I've been using these um, plastic boxes. And then I've got a labelling machine um, that I was gifted a couple of years ago. And I've used that just to label those up. And I found, that, I mean, I've got a spare box down there. So I found that a really useful way of of doing things and because it's not directly in the light from the window then that works quite nicely um i've also just put a little quilt over the top of this storage box that i've got here because i didn't want any light to come through and to alter those fabrics at all so it's just a quilt that i made a, a few years ago just open it up to show you a little table mat which was really sweet and that was when i was first practicing all my quilting but i, I really still like it um, but it's perfect just for sitting over the top there and just covering those bits up so that there's no light damage coming through from there. Even though we don't get a lot of direct light in here, um, I just didn't want to take any risks with that at all. And then I've just got the top of my sewing machine in the corner there and, and my lights and just some of the bulkier items that I, I didn't have anywhere else to, to put. Um, the light is still nice in here and as I say I can control it with the shutter coming down um, and it still makes it quite nice to, to work in. So that's um, these um, units was, were, built, were, were bought as pieces of wood. So there's a place um, in the... Oh, let me turn the camera up so you can see me. Hold on. That's a little bit strange and I'm a little bit hot and sticky as well because it is still warm over here in, in southern Spain. Um, so there are, there are places um, um, online or um, as far as we found ours in, in Spain where they will cut wood to your size. So think about a flat pack kind of piece of furniture that you'd buy, say, from Ikea or from other places like that, where it'll be in Q or wherever it is, depending on which, where you are in the world, um, that's all laid flat for you. 
but it's cut at the correct sizes. Now, normally with IKEA, the holes are all drilled in for you and what have you. But what happened was my husband took the measurements of the unit that we wanted to fill, um, the, the space that we wanted to fill, and then he designed a unit just by drawing the lines and thinking, well, where do we want the supports to go? And then what we did then was he, using that drawing, he then calculated out what size piece of wood that he needed for each of that. We then put those details in online and then the company that we used cut all of that wood to the correct size and then posted it back to us. So it was a completely hands-off experience. It wasn't an in-person experience. But we found that it has actually worked really well because we found that part of the problem is getting the wood home anyway without hiring an, an extra van or, or having a big enough car. But also then the accuracy of the cuts was a big thing for us and we thought that was a possible risk factor for it not working. So by taking away that risk, by putting that, obviously the measurements have got to be correct, um, but by taking away that risk of the, the wood not being cut correctly, it, it actually meant that this all went together really, really nicely. The only variable that you need to be aware of and just to give you just a bit of a tip is um, the pillars that we've got down, going down the support pillars on the side of the um, at the side of the unit here. So where this is, so this support unit here is a different measurement from here to the wall as it is from here to the wall as it is from the skirting to the wall. So you don't, you can't. At first, we measured just in one place, but then afterwards, when we went back and checked another, we just had to tweak the measurement slightly before we'd ordered because that wall isn't straight. So likewise, again, with the unit that's to the ceiling that I'll show you in a second, again, we had to just be aware of that. So just don't don't accept anything that it's, when you're doing your measurements, just don't accept it as an assumption that just because it looks straight, it is. Just do your measurements again, just to do that. But then, yeah, we ordered the wood and then literally he drilled his own holes. It's all MDF, this is. Um, I think it's two centimetres, um, what, deep the um, support is I can't, in the same room and can't find a tape measure and then comes the second one here so yeah the, the main supports are all two centimeters um in thickness to take that weight and without any um bending or bowing and then it's got a backboard on it as well and he's made a wood plinth just for it to fit on just to sit on so it was just up off the ground and then we've just used white furniture paint used like an eggshell kind of finish so it's a matte finish um, and gave it a couple of coats with that an undercoat first just to prime the mdf and then put that on and that's worked really well just to get that unit in place and um, if anybody if anybody wants to have some more um precise details or some um of the design elements of it then we're very happy to to, to share that with you as to what we've done so you can see how we put it all together but i won't do it that now because obviously it's not of interest to everybody and um, but if it is then ask me and then we can help you with that let me just move the camera around again um and then we'll have a look at the taller unit we'll be second Okay, so the toilet unit, if you can tell at the top here, oops, going the wrong way, that way, um, has got this overhang at the top, which I put two lights in the top, and then it's got several shelves units there. It's then got an open section just in this part here, and then it comes out into a desk. So now I've shown you the top part, I'll just move you across so that you can see the desk and the underneath part. Okay, so we've got this overhang desk, or oh, maybe I need to just get under the cable a second. So we've got this overhang desk part just here. And the idea is with this that I can then pull forward either of my two machines, either my cover stitch or my overlocker and work on that without spoiling where I'm working um, with my sewing machine there. So if I'm working on particular colors of the threads, I can get those threaded up and they're actually out of the way then. And as I say, I've got my scissor store on there and I can just pull these forward as I want to use them. I can put my cables in and that, that will then work for me. So that's, that was a, a really important part of the design to have that. Then also underneath here, we've actually got this other section and I put a light underneath the desk. So if I switch on my light, hopefully now you can see this is illuminated now underneath as to the parts that we've got under there. And again, really useful storage just for, I've got one part for cables, parts for my um, um, ironing hams, um, and some other documents and what have you and bits and bobs that I've got there. So together with the, the top of the unit, and let me just turn it up so you can see that the lights are on now on the top as well. So there's the lights showing on the top. 
don't want to make anybody feel sick. It just gives a really nice light in the evening. Let me just um, switch the lights off here and see if you can tell. So that's a really nice light then for in the evening for if I'm doing any sewing in the night and I've not got too many bright, bright lights just in the way for me. So I'm really pleased with the way that that turned out. And those those lights were just off Amazon and then they've just come into the side trunking here and then just, just go down. The trunking's still got to just be fin finished. That's part of the little 5% or so that I've got to finish off yet. But I just wanted to show you how that was all coming together and then how usable this space is under here. As I say, I've got my thread rack. Originally, we'd wanted my thread rack, thread rack to be up and to be in put into the section just there above the cover um cover stitch machine but it's just slightly too long for going in there even sideways it doesn't work um so i just popped it down there for the time being um and it might well stay down there it might not um there we go you can see it now um with my racks on but at least it's as, as far away from the sun as i can get it so that ultraviolet light hopefully won't won't deteriorate those threads and those aren't all of my threads, that's just the ones that I've got open and in use at the moment. My other ones are tucked away in the dark so that they're not going to deteriorate at all at the moment. So let me just pop the light on because then I do want to, I'll, um, I'll talk about my stitch wall and then we'll talk about my table. Okay, so this is my, what I'm calling my stitching wall. Um, I follow some, I watch Floss, Floss Tube quite a lot, which is a... It's like sewing chat to watch when you're um, doing cross stitch or embroidery where you just need something. You don't have to pay, you can listen a lot. You don't have to be looking at the screen all the time. Um, and there's a lady there called Carol at Saltbox Stitch, who's a Saltbox Stitcher over in the States. And she's got the most beautiful sampler wall um, that she has behind her. And that kind of gave me the idea. So I went and had a look at the pictures that I've been, been drawing that often before were on the other side of the camera. And rather than have them out of the, out of sight, I've now decided to pop them behind me so that if I'm talking to camera at all, then you've got something other to look at other than just my ugly mug. So um, this one was a, as I say, was a paint by numbers that I did, but I just love the colours on that. And that was that was hidden behind the door before, but now I've actually got that out and put that up. This is a cross stitch that I did back in 1991 um, when my youngest daughter, um, before my youngest daughter was here, Lucinda. Um, and then others that I've been doing straight, um, been doing since then. Um, and I, I do try to frame them quite nicely and I do save up for my framing so that I I choose the best I can so that I think that once it's framed, it's framed forever. Um, so that's why they, they look quite ornate, but that's why I go, I'm going to say I go a bit over the top with it, but I want them to be nice and I want them to re represent it nicely. But with these, rather than um, stick them on the walls with um, with nails or um, um, picture hooks and that type of thing and make a hole on the wall, I've tried using command strips. Um, they're like um, a plastic Velcro. Um, and it's worked really, really well because you can actually stick the self-adhesive pads on the back of the pictures. And then there's, a, there's, a, there's two pads. One goes on the picture and one goes on the wall. But if you stick the two pads together so they're, they're gelled together like the um, Velcro is and stick, take off one piece and stick it on the back of your picture, then when you take off the other piece of Velcro, you can then just hold your picture up and press it and then the self-adhesive one for the wall will be attached at that point. And that's what I've done with these and we've managed to get them fairly, fairly straight or straight enough for me anyway for my needs. Um, and I've been really happy with the way that that's um, kind of pulled in together. So that's another tip for somebody. And also with doing it this way, if I ever want to change the, the order of the pictures around, then I can just um, reach behind, take out the command strip. And then in theory, it shouldn't um, damage the wall at all. And I can rearrange them in the future. But for the moment, then this, this layout is working for me quite nicely. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, I've got my mannequin in the in the corner as well, so um, she's out of the way, and that's meant that I've got a nice amount of room there because before I had to, all these separate um, shelving units, um, yeah, shelving things, and I'll try and put a bit of a, a before in. If I can get some stills from my previous video, then I'll put some before um, pictures in so that you can actually just compare what it is was then to how it is now. Um, so she's there and I can use that for, 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 for just putting things on and just draping them and just seeing how, the, how they're um, high, um, lying um, 
and again just, it's just it, I don't use it that much for fitting and what have you it's more like for storage of, of garments in progress so if I'm working on a, a dress and I finish the bodice then I'll put the bodice on there while I just finish working on the skirt um, and sometimes I have used it for hemming and that kind of thing but um, she's not to my dimensions my waist isn't quite as small as that and neither are my hips so um, so I just um, I've just put one of my bras on and just padded it out just so that it, the kind of the shoulder and the frame bit will, will be better um, and then use that to work there I'm not going to show you inside the, the wardrobes because I haven't changed those much um, one side is still a little bit chaotic but I have been through everything and I've got rid of things that I didn't want um, and I can pass those on. I've got a sewing teacher over in Spain who runs classes for children and what have you so um, anything that I didn't want. I, for some reason I collected a lot of um, um, needle and thread kits from out of hotels. I mean you know I've got enough at home already so I've, I've put those to one side and obviously they can be donated to to um, to the classes and 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 bits and bobs and some of the older patterns that I know I'm not going to use then I've, I've put those to one side and they'll get donated across as well but um, yeah it's just it's just storage and that's just just been um, put to one side but the thing that I do want to talk to you about is my table so let me just position you at the camera again and then I'll show you my table because that's the that's the the one thing that has changed this sewing machine from being nice to being perfect so um, I'll show you that in a second hold on so I just wanted to show you under the table first. So I've got the table um, top is here. It's a little bit higher at the moment, but I'll show you how that works in a second. I've got my bin anyway, which um, you'd expect to see. Those are the legs for my cutting table extension that I'll show you in a second. Um, but this is what I want to show you. I've actually um, cable tied a um, gang, we call them gang plug, don't we? I think where right? it's got the multiple sockets underneath there with an on and off button. And that's keeping a lot of the, the um a lot of the, the cables off my floor. So at the moment I've only oh I can't do that, can I? I've got only got my foot pedal that's actually on the floor with the cable, whereas before with my wheels from my chair, I was rolling over cables all the time and it was really annoying. So now be, by cable tying most of these things up or at least they're hanging rather than um, being in my way and on the floor, then I've actually got some control of some of that spaghetti. Um, so that has helped. And some things you need permanently in, like I've got a, um, a um, USB port in there plugged in permanently. And my table is actually electric as well. So that has a control box, which is just here. Um, and that has different settings on it. So I can vary the, the height of my table. So let me just talk to you about that. I'll just move it up and down and just show you how that actually works at the moment. Let me just move across. So at the moment, it's at a cutting table height. So if I press button number one now and make sure nothing's in the way, you do have to make sure nothing's in the way. Then if I just press number one, my table is now coming down ele electrically into this position here, which is for um, sewing at, which is my sewing tape height. And then if I choose number three, then it'll go down even further. And then that is actually my um, typing height, if I want to do a typing height. So I'm really thrilled with this because it means that I could stand and sew if I wanted to, um, or I can cut out now at this table. Um, but also it's got the sewing height so I can adjust that up or down and the legs we got from Amazon I believe so I'll pop a link down below to those just so that you, you can see where those are so let me just put this back up again because I need to go I have to go up to the at the height for cutting table height and then I'll show you how I change the um change the legs and bring out the extension Forgive me, it's going to look a bit clumsy because we've cobbled this together ourselves to make it work because we just bought the, um, this is just a desktop that we bought from a local DIY shop. Then we bought the legs separately and, and, and attached those two together. But then the overhang we've attached with hinges and then these legs are legs for a, a kitchen island, that type of thing, but they're adjustable too. So that at the moment they're set for cutting table height but should I need to have, um, say, a class in here, um, if I wanted to have some friends over to sew, then I could take the put the leg, the the legs um, 
twist inside each other and then I could then put the table down and I could have three or four people sitting around this table and all able to sew at the same time. So let me just do, do this section here to show you to put the, um, put the legs up and how that extends out and hopefully you'll be as impressed as I am with it. Okay, I've still got the window, the blind down just because of the time of day it is then the, the lights was going through incredibly. So when I want to change my table from sewing, which is what I do at this side, I don't, if before the table was huge in here, so we've made that quite a lot smaller. And what I've found is rather than it being a hindrance, it actually means that I keep my table cleaner and tidier because I haven't got so much room to work with it. So um, that, that works for me. But if I want to change this into a cutting table, then I can slide this table out and I just move it over to this section just here. And then this is the bit that's going to look clumsy, but please just bear with me because I'm thrilled with it. Um, is then I can then lift up this part here, which is just a, a duplicate of the same table I had there. And then I can then, I've got these cable ties that hold onto the table. So I have got to support it with one hand. Absolutely, that is a drawback. But then I can release that cable tie and the, tape, the leg goes down and then there's a catch on the side like a latch hook and then I can just lock that table leg in place and then I can let go. Then I can locate my next table leg, so there's two table legs, one for each side, undo that cable tie. They aren't the prettiest of the cable ties but they do work and then I can let that leg down as well and just have to lift the this side of the table up slightly so that that one will fit in. And then I can lock that one in place with the lateral I'll take a picture and show you how to do that. But then look at this cutting table. So I can get round here, should I wish, and obviously I can move, move the table across a little bit more so that I can work. But I can get all the way around my table to lay out my fabric and do my cutting out. Um, and it just works fabulously well because of course with that height adjustable, it's now at a nice height for me for doing my pinning, so it protects my back. Um, and then when I'm, when I'm finished, I can take the legs down um, and I can put that away and then it it's, um, works. And if you'd have asked me before I changed, I had the, 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 the new and improved sewing room put together, that we could have fitted this into my sewing room and I'd have said, nah, there's not room for it. But it really does show you, hopefully, what you can actually fit into a smaller room and what you can actually, um, how you can w work it out. Because between all of the storage I've got going up to the ceiling with the with the higher unit over the sides there, with the lights in it, and then going the full width, but keeping it out of the way with the, the bookcase over this side. And then with my Camax, which gives me storage on top as well as inside with the um, big unit. And then having this table, has just meant that it's just absolutely fantastic to, to work with. And, you know, I'm not saying that it's cheap to do, but I'm set now, you know. As long as I look after my table, um, a tabletop and don't have to replace that, then I've got everything I need in this one room stored for any project that I can think that I would have to make, um, dressmaking, crafting, whatever. Um, I really am very set and I and I don't I don't underestimate how lucky I am as well so I just want to make I'm very very grateful to my husband for coming up with the idea of how to do this table and he sourced the legs for me as well um, and then we worked together to, to put it together to make it work because it's an absolute game changer um, and the way it just folds down as well and just hangs down the back of the desk almost like a modesty board you know in the olden days with, with, the, with the desk you'd have a modesty board on it wouldn't you? but it can then just be pulled up and just be used um, has, is, is just an absolute game changer um, so um, yeah let me pop this down again um, I won't show you me doing it because as you can tell it, it's, it's not perfect in terms of the mechanisms ideally I just press a, a, a button and it, the, the legs will drop down but do you know what small price to pay um, for what I'm doing but I, I think it'll look clumsy when people are watching me do it because I'm still learning how to do it and get used to doing it so let me just put that down and then I'll have a, just a, a quick chat with you. 
Okay, so that's that's it then really for the um, tour of, look at the right place on the camera, sorry. That's it for them for my the tour of my new and improved sewing room. I know the room's not new, but certainly the improved section of it, I would certainly um, go along with. And we've tried to do things on a budget to a certain extent, but then we've also tried not to skimp where we knew that things that were being put in place were going to be there forever. Um, so like the bookcase and the, the, the tall one behind me and putting the lights in. I know you could argue, well, that's not necessarily an, an essential part of it. But, you know, for I think it was £30 for the lights and then a bit of our time just for fixing those in. And literally you just run a wire and just you can just um, use like the little um, U-hooks and just bang those in to hold the cables in place. So that's worked really well. Um, as I say, my table is my piece de la resistance. That is really is the thing that has just made this room into being somewhere where I enjoy to sew, to actually where I love to sew now. Um, and hopefully that shows in the videos that I make for everybody else to watch. So I'll stop rabbiting. If there's any, <laughs> you know, I like to waffle. If there's anything that you want to know more about, then please let me know. Just pop it in the comments below. Um, and if you've been inspired by um, this relatively small, I know it's, you know, it's it's not a massive space, but hopefully I've inspired you to, to, to look at things in a different way and to use what you can do, whether it's going out or going behind doors or whatever you can do. Just having a declutter sometimes can just really work wonders and just putting all like things together and then finding the storage space to put that. But yeah, I've got some plans to make. I've got a big pile of dressmaking fabric. So the next thing that I'm going to be doing now is going to be doing the Marcel dress sew along and that's going to be a beginner's sew along. So if you want to join me along for that, that'd be great to see you there. Um, I've also got another little bit of an, an news that's coming out in the future, which I need to save just for the moment, but that's going to be excited and that's along, it's not lunar lapping, but it's along that kind of, um, a kind of theme. So if you're here for the doll making, as I would call lunar lapping, then there may be a little bit of news coming for you in the next month or so, so keep looking. And then I've got um, some cashmere patterns I want to make. Um, so they're all coming too. So I'm waffling again, I'm going off on a tangent, aren't I? Sorry. Um, and I'm hoping to encourage my husband to do a twirl and review video for the shirts that I've made him as well so if I can persuade him to do that as well that would be good fun wouldn't it so hopefully there's plenty for you to keep you occupied on my channel um, and you like the variety I know I don't just stick to one theme but hopefully you like the variety that I enjoy um, bringing to my channel because I certainly do and it certainly means I never 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 get bored so thank you for watching. As I say, any questions, give me a shout and I hope that you have a wonderful space, whether it's a kitchen table or a dining table or a space in the bedroom to sew at. And I hope you get as much pleasure from your sewing space as I do from mine. Take care, everybody, and thank you for watching. Bye.